Hello YouTube, welcome back to my playthrough of GTA 3 The Definitive Edition. I hope that you guys are enjoying this series. If you do, please drop a like because it does help the series out a lot. I'm sorry for not uploading for a few days, I've just been busy with the contract DLC, had to put out some content on that, been working on some guides there, and I got some great lore videos coming up on the old GTA games, just be patient with me, they're coming up, they'll just take a, a bit of a time to put out, but we're continuing from where we left off here, so we're going to be doing Salvatore's missions here, and we're going to be unlocking the second island. So let's do it here, cutting the grass. Leave us alone for a minute. The Colombian cartel is making spank somewhere in Liberty, but we don't know where. And they seem to know everything we're doing before we do. We got us a rat. There's a guy named Curly Bob works the bar at Luigi's. He's been throwing more money around than he's earning. He ain't pimping or pushing, so he must be talking. He usually gets a taxi home after work, so follow him. And if he's ratting us out, kill him. So, um, the, uh, Colombian cartel has an active conflict with the Leone family. And the, um, uh, the Colombian cartel, like Salvatore says, are always on to them. And Salvatore suspects that they have a rat, which he's right on the money there. Curly Bob, he's an associate of the Leone family. He works at Luigi's Club, and he has more, more money than he's earning. And the thing is, though, is that that is really dangerous, specifically there, because when somebody has... When somebody's in the Mafia, and they're earning... They have way more money than they're earning. Uh, that... The other Mafia... The other Mafia members, especially the boss, are going to catch on to that pretty quick if that person isn't smart in hiding it. So the fact that Curly Bob's been um, uh, just, uh, you know, spending his money like crazy in front of everyone, it's pretty much his own death sentence at this point. And also, um, this, this area right here is a great area for the AK-47 armor and health and a uh, Leone Sento. I know I've said that a bunch of times, but I just love this location so much. So, um... About, um, uh, about, um, uh, Curly Bob, um, Mafia members oftentimes, you know, they, they do things on the side to make their own money outside of the organization, but especially when they get, like, a big, you know, um, uh, job that gets them, like, a lot of money, they have to give the boss a cut, and, uh, if they don't give the boss a cut, that's pretty much almost always a death sentence. So Curly has left the club now, there he is. And there's a spooko meter here. So this is like another tailing mission. You just gotta follow Curly Bob as he gets to the docks. Oh, 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 oh. Whoa. Almost got spotted there. It's all about the music. Oh my god, almost failed. Next up, we got boys to girls, and this track's called Pray It Goes Okay. Okay, so this is this is where Curly Bob gets to right here. Here comes our little friend, Mr. Big Mouth himself. Were you followed? You know what goes on here is our little secret on this. No, no, I, I wasn't followed. You got my stuff? Here's your spank. Catalina looks a little Scoop. different than in the intro. Not talk. Okay, so the Leones are fighting wars on two fronts. They're in a turf war with the triads, with no sign of either side giving up. Meanwhile, Joey Leone has stirred up some bad blood with the Ferrellis. Every day they're losing men and influence in the city. Salvatore has become a dangerous and paranoid. He expects everybody and everything. And with loyalty like yours, what has he possibly got to worry about? 
So that's Catalina and Miguel. Catalina, Claude, um, Claude's uh, ex-girlfriend that betrayed him. So now notice how it says whack Curly Bob. A lot of people don't understand what that means. Whack is a, um, what's he doing going up on the ship? He usually doesn't do this. Okay, now it's just really easy. But, um, whack is a mafia term. Um, it's like language kind of that the mafia uses. Whack basically means kill. So when they say whack someone, it means kill them. And also, um, uh, if you guys noticed one thing about Curly Bob, what was Curly Bob? He was a drug addict. And so not only was he taking money, but he was taking drugs from the, um, the cartel who were giving it to him. So when somebody is a drug addict, especially in an important part of a criminal organization, the rest of the criminal organization tends to see that, and that they see that person as a liability. Because when they're a drug addict, they're li they can possibly snitch to another gang just like that for drugs and for money, and also possibly um, become a police informant just because of their drug addiction. Bomb the base, one of the best missions. Out, but while we're at war with the triads, we ain't strong enough. The cartel has got bottomless funds from pushing that spank crap. If we make an open attack on them, they'll wipe the floor with us. They must be making spank on that big boat that Curly led you to. So we gotta use our heads. Or rather, one head. Your head. I'm asking you to destroy that spank factory as a personal favor to me, Salvatore Leone. If you do this for me, you will be a made man. Anything you want. Go and see 8-Ball. You'll need his expertise to blow up that boat. So I've noticed that, you know, uh, Salvatore is one of the few characters that Claude seems to really take seriously when um, uh, looking at them. Like, he gives Salvatore right eye contact. And I think that um, uh, uh, Salvatore is one of the few people that Claude may have respected initially. Which I'll talk about that in a video that I have coming up on Claude. So let's go see 8-Ball um, here. So now this is weird. It's like two missions in one right here. So now bomb the base act two. That that technically counts a mission. Yo, driving the eight ball. Salvatore phoned ahead, but a job like this is gonna need a lot of fireworks. I'll need a hundred thousand dollars to cover expenses. But you know, with me, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Come back, brother, when you have the money. Well, I have the money right now, but um, uh, you get more money back. I'm pretty sure for um. For doing it. Bomb the base, act two. Here we go. Okay, let's do this then. I can set this baby to detonate, but I still can't use a piece with these hands. Here, this rifle shall help you pop some heads. Wonder what kind of bomb 8-Ball has there. That it's, it's powerful enough to blow up a ship. Okay, so 8-Ball is here again. This is the same guy that Claude broke out of um, a, a prison with, or technically the prison bus, I should say. Let's get on over to the docks right now. You're listening to Head Radio, Rock Liberty City for 60 years. DJ Michael Hunt taking you through another set of... I hate when they, like, stop in an intersection like that. Get a good vantage point, then I'll head in when you fire the first shot. Now some people um, really hate this mission, but the thing is, um, I like this mission a lot. So 
So the ship is actually a spank factory, which is they're they're using it to produce drugs. And this, in a way, this is a way for Claude to get made, what Salvatore is telling him. Made means that you become a made man, means you become a full member of the Mafia, but Salvatore is an Italian. I mean, Claude's not Italian. And the reason that that's um, important is because a non-Italian cannot become a full member of the Mafia. That's just some of the Mafia's code. The Italian Mafia are very clear on that. And also, this is a payback in a way also, because remember that the Colombian cartel betrayed Claude. So now Claude's going to be picking off guys here. Now you have to cover 8-Ball really quickly because he will die very fast in this mission. So just pick these guys off in a rapid succession as fast as you can. Okay, I think that's it. I think we got everyone. That's some really good shooting, Sniper Elite style. Catalina and Miguel lost millions of dollars in that. Millions. I don't know if a ship would sink that fast, but it's, um... So you got $150,000 back. So you got an extra $50,000. So, you know, it is worth, you know, putting in the $100,000 into that mission. Overnight.com, and we'll send you a cute kitten overnight. PetsOvernight.com, delivering little bundles of love in a box directly to your door. Last request, one of the infamous GTA missions. It's my favorite cleaner. I'm proud of you, my boy. You kicked the shit out of those grease balls. I just got one little job for you before we can all celebrate. There's a car around the block from Luigi's Club. The inside is covered in brains. We gotta help some guy make up his mind and it proved a little uh, messy. Take it to the crusher before the cops find it. So this mission is very, um, very, like I was saying, very infamous in the GTA community. So Salvatore said, all I want you to do before we celebrate is to pick up this car and um, uh, go and take it to the crusher. When somebody tells you to pick up a car, like um, in a very suspicious place in the GTA games, usually not a good sign. There have been a few incidents in GTA games when they tell you to go pick up a car and something happens. So here we go, there's... This is Maria. The car's a trap. Meet me at the slip south of Callahan Bridge. Okay, so now let me show you guys what happens if you get into the car. Oh, it's the other alley. So you have two options now. You can either get in the car or you can actually go to, um, uh, uh, you can go and meet Maria. This is what happens if you get in the car. This. Yep, the car blows up. So there's a car bomb inside it.
So let's get on over to the um uh to the drop off or the location now to meet Maria. But um uh for people that never saw GTA 3 and this is like your first time experiencing it in the definitive edition, you're like, why is Salvatore betraying you? You did everything he asked for. Um I did a whole video on this, you know, why does Salvatore betray Claude? I think it's approaching like almost half a million views now. It's like gotten really popular. And I've noticed it had a huge spike in views since like the, the GTA 3 Definitive Edition came out. I'm assuming a lot of people wanted to know why, so they were Listen, searching it up. Salvatore thinks that we're going behind his back, so he was offering you to the cartel in order to make a deal. I couldn't let him do that. I mean, the worst thing is, it's all my fault because I told him we were an item. Don't ask me why. I don't know. Look, you're a marked man on the Mafia turf, and I've got to get out of here, too. I've seen too much killing, too much blood. I... Look, this is a friend of mine, okay? She's an old friend, and it's, it's just so good. She's someone we can trust. Come on, enough of the speeches. We better get out of here before we get more hysterical Italians wanting less friendly reunions. So, um, uh, basically what's happened is that stupid Maria, or Maria the idiot as I call her, um, she ended up telling Salvatore that they were having an affair, which is not true at all. And, um, uh, the reason Salvatore betrayed Claude, it's not there because of the affair. The affair was the final spark, you know, the final, you know, um, uh, the final event that caused the betrayal. So the ultimate reason is because of CJ. Uh, because CJ um, betrayed Salvatore years ago when CJ CJ met uh, Salvatore met CJ somebody who he's not known before he worked his way up with Salvatore and then CJ betrayed Salvatore and robbed ca his casino or the casino that Salvatore ended up taking over from the Sindaco and the Ferrelli family and so Salvatore did not want to take a risk again and so decided not to take a risk so um, and try to, to kill talk, Claude uh, why don't you go? but it's going to be a big mistake you need a place to lie low there's a warehouse at the edge of Belleville that should suit your needs. Come back here to my condo when you're ready, and you and me can have a little chat. I don't know why we got paid for that mission. A marked man. We got a trophy. We got a picture of Salvatore there. But, um, I don't know why we got a, um, um, uh, uh paid for that mission. That mission seems kind of weird if you think about it, because... Because you didn't really, you 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 News didn't get paid by anyone unless it was a suka. Repairs to but. the Callahan Bridge have been completed. Since the explosion, engineers have been working around the clock to get traffic flowing between Portland and Staunton Island once again. So the Callahan Bridge is now fixed. You can now go across the Callahan Bridge whenever you want. And I love the Yakuza car. The Yakuza car is one of the best vehicles in the game. So here we go, this is Claude's other safe house. So I guess we'll, uh, we will probably wrap it up here, guys. I know this was a really short part, and uh, I apologize for that. Um, but I like to do these parts in sections, like I said. And so this is the section that Salvatore, you know, betrays um, uh, Claude in. On the next part, we're going to be doing all of Asuka's missions. And also, Claude is going to be getting some payback on Salvatore for his betrayal. But um, check out that video that I mentioned earlier. I'll have it up on the screen at the end of this. And it's why does um, uh, Salvatore b betray um, Claude. It's a whole detailed explanation on it. I gave you guys kind of the summary but there's a lot of reasons on why Salvatore betrayed Claude it's not you know as simple as people think it's like a whole load of reasons and the reason he doesn't betray Tony Cipriani for people that are asking because I know people are going to see that and say that in the comments the reason he never betrayed Tony Cipriani is because him and Tony Cipriani go back years they've known each other for a long time and also because um uh they grew up in the same city you know, they knew each other. You know, Tony, on top of that, is Italian. And like I said, the Mafia, um, uh, they only allow made men to become Italian. So he's known Tony for years. He's known Tony's mo uh, mother. And on top of that, Tony killed a made man for him, which he had to leave the city. So that's the, one of the reasons why um, uh, why Salvatore never betrays Tony. It did cross his mind, but he never betrayed Tony because of those reasons. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Um, take care, everyone. Mm -hmm.